are these are about twenty five now. They, I think they they're mentioned in this article. This is from uh, RogerEbert.com, which I figured was a pretty. Oh, this is from Roger Ebert. I, yeah, I was gonna say. No, no, Roger Ebert. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so how follow House of Usher? Uh, Shelby's I enjoyed watching that. it right guys, now. I haven't seen it. Okay. I need to see it. If you like Edgar Allan Poe stuff, like it's a beautiful love letter to his work. So, uh, I haven't seen Rain Dogs. Has anybody seen Rain Dogs? No. Uh, Clay, you were all about Scavengers Rain. Dude, this show is the closest thing we'll get to something like heavy metal, or if you like love death and robots on Netflix. But this is like an ongoing series that is visually stimulating it is so cool it is just uh the concept of uh astronauts having to land on a planet they know nothing about and survive and that's it okay i am adding it to my queue right now um, yeah same, I'd same here um i didn't watch killing it Josh, i did yeah peacock you, you got you watched it I, you know i didn't um i remember the trailer for it and i thought oh that'd be fun to watch and then it just there's just too much i can't, yeah. I can't yeah. it. it's it's a great background sitcom we watched the first season but we're yeah, going to watch the second season because it's a binge worthy show that's hilarious craig robinson is fucking great in it. i love craig robinson yeah i need to write this down so we can grab a post-it well, it's on, it's on, yeah it's on the it's on the dock so okay i, I love this season of fargo i thought it was haven't fantastic. started it yet i I highly recommend it. I think, I mean, this season was so good that it made me go look at the other seasons to see if they were just as good. Season uh, two. Season yeah. Season two is probably the best way. I need to watch season two. So, Speaking of, I want to watch the new season of True Detective because I've oh, heard it's a direct it's, sequel to the first season. is the only one I've seen. Kind of. Uh, kind of, but it is good. I, I really so it good, time. dude. So I mean, Jodie Foster, you can't go wrong, you know. So when, it's weird watching her because she brings a level of acting that you just aren't used to seeing. That like you believe she's the character from the first I mean, moment she's on the screen. Yeah, she's nominated for an Oscar for Nyad or something. I think it's a, a movie that came out last year that I haven't seen. Oh wow, yeah, okay. she's fantastic. Uh, go watch Panic Room. That's a great yeah. film. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, full circle. I did watch this on Max. It was a Max original. It's it's an interesting interesting thriller. I don't know that it would have made my top of the year, but it was really interesting to watch. Um, Primo, I haven't seen that. It's on freebie. I don't think I'm just kind of reading your faces. I was. Uh, I haven't checked that silo either. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've I've heard um, that it's decent because of the reading material, but. Yeah. That's that's the only uh, word I've got. Isn't that based on the comic? It's, I thought it was a book. I think it's a book. Oh, it's maybe, a book. Okay. Maybe there's a comic based on it too. Uh, and it's by Graham Yost, who did Justified, who, which I do love. Justified. Uh, yeah. Speaking of westerns, uh, Dark Winds. I haven't seen that either. That's on AMC. Uh, Adventure Time. Fiona and Kate. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen it. I need to though. I've just seen random episodes. Yes, this is one of mine. I finally did it. Practice means means dead. Ago. It's no good. Tell okay. a little about it, Josh. I'm sorry. Well, okay. So here's the thing I found surprising. So we got through the end of the season. Loved it. Really, really good. Great callbacks. I felt like like we, we got done with it, and I'm like, okay, so it's a it's a, a two and done, right? Like it ended in a way that felt satisfying. And literally it was just our weird timing. The very next week is when Max canceled it and everyone went up in arms. And I'm just kind of like, I felt like they were done. Like what more did they have to do? Right. And yeah. I, mean, I, I, so, mean, I would love to see more adventures with them. That's the main thing is like, the yeah. Because, like, the way the first season went, you had to wait, like, four or five episodes before they really get to the pirating. So it's like, you kind of go, well, now that they got to the pirating, now they've got to this relationship, now that, you know, where could they go from there? You know, like, yeah. it, it, yeah. you kind of want to see the adventures they would have, but because of Max, you won't. <laughs> right. yeah. Well, I've heard they're shopping it around, so maybe it'll end up somewhere else. But I, I just... 
it has a very satisfying kind of completeness. Even to the point where I, I, I made the comment, the last episode feels rushed. And I don't know if maybe they had gotten wind it was not going to be renewed. And so they're like, let's just kind of really get through this. Yeah. But um, but not in a bad way. It, I, I still, like, we got done and we were just like, that's that's beautiful. That's great, right? Yeah. So, Okay. Small light. I don't know that I have the Nat Geo channel, so I don't know. Yeah, Jesus, do I have the Nat Geo channel? I think that's on, I think that's on Geo Geo. And Disney afterwards, on Disney+. Plus. Okay, oh, I need to watch this. Righteous Gemstones, I love the show. It's so yeah. fucking... Is it on Max? It just says HBO. I don't... Yeah, it's, it's on Max, yeah. It's okay. on Max. Uh, John Goodman is the best thing on that show. Yeah. Well, when is he not? <laughs> so, Gen V, highly recommend. Okay. Uh, if you like, it's, it's The Boys season 3.5. I haven't seen The Boys. I need to. I like how these two are all like screen grabs of people kissing, but go on. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim. I need to watch this. I need to watch it it's so bad. so fun. And so I need to watch really the movie first is the problem. It's been a long time. I know my, my brother just went to a special screening of it at Alamo down in Austin. So, oh. Okay, real quick. Uh, for Leonard Kim, Silas started out intriguing. Then he <clears> lost him <throat> in the middle. Then killed her by the finale. So there you go. If you can't take Leonard Kim's word for it, who can you trust? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I want to see the curse so bad. I haven't finished it because it's very uncomfortable to watch. Yes, and I think that's all right. Design. <laughs> 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 Maybe it's very well done. <laughs> I haven't seen Dead Ringers, but I, I should. Either. I love Rachel Weisz. I I do too. Yeah, she's always great. Uh, I am Virgo. Another time I want to see this. It looks so good. I feel like I never, other than the boys, I never know what's on Prime. Like if it's not a comic book thing, I don't know that it's happening. Yeah, no, I I agree. Uh, Poker Face on Peacock. I need to watch Poker Face. It's yeah, in yeah. my fucking list. This, my is just, this is just Josh's list of things he has to watch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just writing shit down. Um, Very, uh, I haven't finished it, but I did like the first few seasons. So yeah, I haven't finished it either. The bear. Need to All watch right, the let's bear. talk about the bear. I love the bear. <laughs> this is on my list. Episode six of this past season is one of the best episodes of television. Oh, interesting, because I think episode seven is the best episode of television on twenty twenty three. Wait, what's episode seven? That's the dinner. I have it down as episode six. Is the oh, dinner. okay. Then we're talking about the same episode. <laughs> <laughs> So if, you, if you know the story of the bear, like there, there is a, a lot of drama within the family. So this goes back in time, tells you about a family uh, holiday where uh, their their mom is cooking, and their mom's played by Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh wow! Fucking top notch performance. She should win an Emmy for this. She's so fucking good in this. It is amazing because she just comes in, drops that shit like she could just do it all day and you just see all these actors just playing off of her because she's so yeah. good I mean, clay's right it is episode six it is amazing jamie lee curtis for the win for this year yeah i agree it's fantastic so go watch if you haven't seen the bear go watch and john bear. barenthal like like i just don't even talk about him and he is like one of the shining stars in that show that when he shows up is- it's always like oh shit what's happening I can't believe I can't believe American Jiggle got canceled. <laughs> Let's All reboot right. a movie forty years later and see if people are interested in this IP. Especially a movie about a gigolo. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I haven't seen true. Beef on Netflix. You guys, anybody? This, was, this took a lot yet. of awards. This took a lot of awards. I've time. heard it's really good, but yeah, but but. I, I I only heard of it after hearing about the bear, and then I was like, "Are they talking about the same thing?" Like it was that weird like name overlap thing. So I gotta fucking watch the last of us. God damn it. Episode it is- three. Oof, man, episode three is one of the best episodes of television of last yeah. year. That's Nick This, this is the first thing on the that. list that I've seen. Let's see. I'm not as uh, Leonard King's not as high on beef, but he gets it. So. Jeff, what do you think? What do you think of The Last of Us? Without any spoilers, uh, please. 
Uh, I thought uh, I, mean, I've seen, I, haven't, I haven't eaten a mushroom since. I'll put it that way. That <laughs> that cold open in that first episode is one of my favorite things. They like it. Just it's so good. Oh, Josh, you have to watch this show. I need to watch it. Even even like my 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 wife's employees were raving about it. And she came home and she's like, "We gotta watch this show called Last of Us." And I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> so we need to just kind of sit down and do it. It's really good. It's really good. Another show that's on Jeff's list. I need to watch this. Oh, God, I love this show. Oh. <laughs> Tell yeah, us about Reservation Dogs. Yes. Uh, it, it takes place in Oklahoma. It just follows. It is a coming of age story about these four kids uh, who live on a reservation in Oklahoma. Uh, and just how, I mean, really, that's that's the crux of it. They just, how they're, how how they want to become adults uh and they go on adventures they've had some heartbreaks as friends growing up but it's really about the community that they're raised in and then their uh just how they view themselves as native americans and whatnot um it's just so good it's just yeah. uh, interconnecting relationships between all the characters uh it's this was its third and final season oh. uh, this last year uh, but I think they knew they were. I get the feeling that they knew they were. It was not like it was canceled. I think they just knew they were going out. Yeah. Oh, I see. Um, but yeah, it's it's so good. The weird thing is, I watched this, and then like two weeks later, Echo uh, premiered on Disney Plus, and a lot of the cast carry over. So if yeah. you're a, a Native American <laughs> actor, like you're going to get work because there's only like a handful of you out there, and you're getting all kinds of roles. Um, it's so funny. It's just so charming. You care about the characters so much. Uh, it's it's great. I, I can't recommend it enough. Cool. And then there on their list, Succession, of course. I mean, that is the most shocking season of television that I've ever seen. I love it. I'm like all the four away from finishing this last season. Okay. All the performances are great. Uh, I love Brian Cox is just my favorite person on the screen ever. Uh, so yeah, I, I love this show. So I won't let me not scroll down in case they reveal anything, Jeff. I don't want to spoil it for you. All right, no, that's good because I've never seen it, but I know it is top notch. Well, I, I don't think, yeah, those, we could do that for because I, I kind of like I'm saying, I think it, I think it might be three episodes left. So I don't, I don't really. Um, I have a friend who's like, I don't know if rich people really work like that, and I'm like, oh, they do. <laughs> they so do. I mean. I'm sure this is. It, it's all kind of based on what is it, the Murdoch family? Is that who own? You still yeah, own Fox? it's a little bit Murdoch, and it's a little bit. Uh, I think it's whoever owned like the New York Times or something like that. Yeah. It's, a, it's somebody uh, else too. It's so it's a few things, but I mean, the performances are great. There's not one single likable character. In the See, show. That, that's going to be a hard sell for me. I've uh, I've said yeah. before. I have a really hard time watching shows where none of the protagonists are likable. I, I definitely get whenever whenever that happens, I get that. Uh, so I don't, you know. I would know. I would say they're all mostly bad people, but they're not unlikable. Okay. They're definitely no. like charming and you understand why people yeah, like yeah. are. There's a, there's a definite charm to all of them. But gotcha. as far as you're like, it's just like, oh, you're not a very good person maybe I, yeah I, but I they're not good people. i shouldn't root for you so. i mean it's done for comedic effect like i'm thinking of like arrested development right like you still have like michael as the likable character the the mostly upright one um but yeah i just I, I, this is why and I, I should probably watch it but it's why i hated that remake of cape fear I, by the end, I'm like, just all of you die. Everyone die, please. I don't like any of you. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, the, the only show that's not on the list that I'll throw out, and then Jeff, I know you, I know both of you guys have other things to talk about. For the most part, that, that was a pretty comprehensive list for me. Uh, Loki, season two. Was Need to watch it. Magical. Like, it's such a beautiful show. Just so well done. Definitely the best thing that marvel put out last year uh maybe guardians i don't know i, I kind of flip back and forth but yeah loki season two just 
Great, great stuff. So, uh, Jeff, you got a couple more other things we'll, on your list. Yeah, I have. Uh, I just finished literally last night uh, the third season of Ted Lasso. Yes, that's um, online. <laughs> yeah, I I enjoyed it. Ted Lasso. Uh, this last season, I think, got a, a little bit over silly for for me compared to the first two seasons. Um, Bill Lawrence, uh, the creator of this, sh- was also the creator of Scrubs. And oh my and God! I never realized that. Yeah. yeah. So there's a little bit of that silliness that you see kind of creeping through, and especially in this last season. Yeah. Where, you know, it, uh, there's there's some there's some episodes in the first two seasons that are really kind of heavy. I mean, like they they've always done a really good job of balancing the, the humor with kind of like the reality of like the, the hardness of human living. Right. Um, uh, this season, I think it's a little, it's a, you know, a little I, bit on the silly side of the characters being. I just think it's silly been boy. sillier before, but because a lot of these characters speak with an English accent, we don't think it's that silly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but I feel like they've leaned into it definitely in this last yeah. year. But it, it does have a nice wrap up. Like the last couple of episodes, do feel like okay, we're wrapping this up and let's. Yeah. It was it was that last episode, which I feel I, I I didn't check the time. Is it like ninety minutes? I mean, it feels like a movie. It's a long one. The last yeah. three episodes are like an hour over an hour long. But I just um I also found it kind of interesting that season three is v- much hornier. Like there are a lot of sexual jokes. Like the joke with Beard and Lasso just talking about pegging. I I, I don't know why it just it floored me. But we watched that, and then my daughter and I went to uh, to Barnes and Noble, and in the toy section they had like the little kids like Ted Lasso thing, and I'm like, man, don't let that kid watch season three, right? You're gonna have some really awkward conversations. But I want to see all the kids that are googling pegging. Pegging, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, it was like I loved the to me the greatest character in that show is Beard because. Like, like I will go to bat for, I think it's season two, you get the, the Beards Night Out episode. Yeah. And they just keep leaning into this, like, he has a rich backstory, but he's so stoic and quiet, you're not going to get it. And then the reveal of it at the end of season three, I thought was just so beautiful, right? Because yeah. they didn't make a big deal of it. It resolved this both kind of both character and I'm being vague intentionally both kind of character arcs in that moment it was just it was just so well done um wow anyway I, I'm sorry Jeff go ahead <laughs> no, no, no. Was, oh yeah I'm all for uh yeah it's uh, but uh, overall I love Ted Lasso great one of the great TV shows uh the only other thing I had on this list because I didn't, I didn't get to watch a lot of television this last year uh but I did enjoy the Muppets mayhem season one. On Disney I, Plus. Okay, good. Uh, it, it so is. good. It's oh uh, see, I think a lot of, I think a lot of people felt like this, but I I feel like it it encapture it, it encapsulates what the the zaniness of old school Muppets. And Muppets I think have a hard time because Jim Henson came out of that vaudeville like space with the waka, early waka. Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, I think he had it in good with a lot of like those old Hollywood types that like that kind of stuff. So like Steve Martin was always like a big fan of the Muppets, and you know like yeah. so he was there in those early days, the seventies. You know, it was always easy for them to kind of weave in these interesting real live action famous people into the Muppets. You know, and now it feels weirdly kind of hamstrung when you see a famous person with the Muppets. Kind of like it's like okay, whatever. But this does a good job of kind of like homaging that old school stuff where it felt like people wanted to work with the Muppets because they were Muppets, you know? Right. Uh, uh, Dr. Teeth, like it has these moments where you're just like, why is Janice the most like the Muppet that's giving me personally like like the lessons that I want to hear in life kind of stuff, you know? It's, it's, I thought it was a great show, you know? Yeah. I, For a I show being like about it. Muppets. Yeah, but I just didn't finish it. It just kind of petered out. I felt like there were times that were really great. And specifically, it's just when the Muppets are being the Muppets. You know, like I love kind of 
they have this band that has this backstory and this bit of history. And I kind of love when it goes back into that and you see these old photos that they do that just brings their level of comedy and mythology to another level. It was some of the scenes with some of the humans that weren't so great, yeah. some of the story. I, I like the idea that they were are kind of forced to do this album and work together. So that's kind of fun. Um, I, you know, uh, Durs from Work, Workaholics is in it, and I'm a big fan of his. So uh, I love seeing the kind of weirdo character he played. It just didn't keep me coming back. The, the human though. stuff, you are correct. The human stuff does kind of break it down. There's some romancy stuff with the humans and whatnot. And you know, it always kind of there, slows it down a little bit. But that actor is also in Monarch. Yeah, yeah, I know. I need, yeah. To see, I need to see Monarch, but I need to see uh, that too. I, mean, I, 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 the high seas. I just feel like Disney has never quite known what to do with the Muppets. And Mayhem felt like, just from the trailer I saw, the closest to the original show and movie mm -hmm. um, that they've done. Now, I will go to that. I love the Office Muppet show. Right, I thought that was a fantastic show, and it was a it was an utter travesty they didn't renew it for a second season. But, um, but I still I still just kind of feel like like Disney doesn't know what to do with this property. They they bought it because it's it's beloved, but you need Henson to really do it. The one also, thing I haven't like seen. Some, them, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say it feels like something that Gen Z would really get behind too, because oh, it's boy. weird, and Gen Z loves yeah. weird. And it's also like. It's there. It is. See, look how much they love it. Uh, <laughs> uh, going to make their 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 MacBooks and throw confetti. Because <laughs> <laughs> the Muppets are yeah, they're a weird acid trip, and I think that's you know, I think Gen Z loves that kind of stuff, and it's also like uh, they're they're all handmade, you know, so it's. There's, there's a craft element too. And I, I, handmade. <laughs> handmade. I just. <laughs> I wish they would kind of return to the old format of the TV show that was the show behind a show. Right. And, mm -hmm. and then bring Aaron Sorkin in to write the Muppets. That's kind of what the <laughs> office show was, right? That's a horrible idea. That is awful. But that's kind of what that office one did, right? It was the show behind the show. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Can you imagine a Muppet walk and talk? Oh, I can. And I kind of don't want to. Those four <laughs> puppeteers, Jesus! They have, no, they would have to move the set. They yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. No, I, I, I would bet they would have a track through. The, yeah, yeah, you would have a track. Yeah, in the, yeah exactly. So, be guys, we can do it. We can do it. Well, then why don't we just do uh, the Lego West Wing? <laughs> I would do that. Bring back the whole original cast to voice them. They voice them and just do them in Lego figures. Do them in Lego. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We'll, we'll reach that would be a, one of those big Lego sets that I would yeah. buy. Like they have the Friends set and the whatever set. Ooh, I would buy a, a West Wing set. Same, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Just to, just to make sense of that set, right? I mean, come on, let's yeah. be honest. Like I know they're trying to recreate the West Wing, but I'm sure they have a White House set already. It's just a build yeah, out of that. Say, and they just make. I was about to say, you know, you could just buy the White House Lego I'm set. Yeah. <laughs> See, I would want like CTU headquarters from 24. Oh, it, it does exist. Um, who has? Oh, only fifty bucks. That's not bad. Oh wait, no, I I take it back. That's a, the off brand Lego. Uh, the actual one is two hundred dollars. Um, fifty bucks to the, the White House. Movie. Yeah. All right. Um, cool. uh, Clay, you want to hit the rest of yours real quick? The the ones we haven't talked about. Oh, the shows. Yeah. Um, I, I'm assuming Bupkis wasn't in the top three of shows for last year. Uh, Bupkis is pretty great. The Pete Davidson show that's on Peacock. Hold on. The dog wants to talk about it. Luna. <laughs> he is like right out of range where I can't shoot her with water. What are you doing? <laughs> Sorry. So the Pete Davidson sh show is pretty fun. Uh, I mean, just go into it as like a, a an old sitcom. Um, but there are two specific episodes, episode two and episode four, that are like fucking fantastic. They are really good. Episode two in, uh, in particular, because Pete Davidson's not in it. <laughs> it is it is the story of him going to a wedding as a kid where he's really 
put around a bunch of adults who realize, you know, like, oh, yeah, his dad died in 9-11. And so, like, his uncle's taking him with him, kind of taking him under his wing. And basically the whole night is this party where his uncle is saying, uh, do as I say, not as I do, as he goes about drinking and doing cocaine and just having a party that night. And so that's what Pete looked up to as a kid going, wow. Oh, and so, and, and it's told through the eyes of a kid. It's just a really great episode. Uh, I can't believe no one's talking about the finale of Doom Patrol. I that's because, that's because Max didn't even tell anyone that was happening. I know, and 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 I've only seen season one. I need to. I need yeah, to. I'm uh, behind. I'm on like two yeah. or three. It What's is- Doom Patrol? Of <laughs> 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 uh, anything, of any any comic we read. <laughs> Of any comic we read growing up, I never thought I would see a live action Doom Patrol because it is bad shit. It is bad shit on the page, but it is bad shit on the screen and like awesome. A legit Doom Patrol TV show, right? Not 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 changed, not diluted. It's like we are, you know what? Danny the Street fucking doing it. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. No, and it, and it and it incorporates every run. So if you like the Gerard Way stuff, there's stuff from that. The Grant Morrison one, obviously, but even the the origins and the beginning stuff, uh, yeah, from the original creators. I want to know. I, I would love to know, and maybe this is in like commentary or special features on the the Blu-rays. How the fuck did they sell this show to that cast? Wow, right? I don't know. Yeah, because, because, like, I mean, because it's got huge people in it, like really big people, and I'm like, how did they get them to do this? I well, mean, when she's not actor... directing, she's not that large. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. I've seen it with my eyes. She gets really big. <laughs> I, I, I mean, from an actor standpoint, I could easily see uh, Crazy Jane being the one that what people would want to pursue. Because yeah. if you if you look at any other show, the only thing closest to this was. Uh, Oh my God! What was the I show? I mean, Umbrella, Umbrella Academy is. Oh yeah, yeah. it's similar to the Doom Patrol, but no, uh, Tatiana Masali. What was her? Oh, original oh show? yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Black uh, Black Orphan. Black Orphan. Orphan yeah. Black. Crazy. Black Jane. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy Jane triples the amount of personalities that she has and yeah. pulls them all off. But the thing is, is at times the actresses, uh, the actress gets to play that role. And at other times there are other actors that play those roles. So she has to become another actor when she's playing it in quote, real life. Um, I think the appeal, I mean, Matt Bomber does an incredible job without being able to show his face, his negative man. Uh, and, and same Fraser. with Robot Man. Robot Man I mean, is great. That's how yeah. they sold the- they sold Brendan Fraser and Matt Bomer like, you know, you don't have to be there. Like, right, exactly. Now, Court over. Got Timothy Dalton, I'll never know. See, and that's the one that gets me. It's like, all right, we want you to come in. You're kind of playing Professor X, but you're not. And you're also a giant dick. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. yeah, and see, this is what has made me want to revisit Doom Patrol from the very start. So, I'm working with Sabrina, and hopefully, we'll be able to get on like a monthly show here where we go from the very beginning of Doom Patrol all the way up to today. And we're, mm-hmm. we're going to be probably doing it in bundles of six or, or 12 episodes, but we go through all of them, mm-hmm. the Geffen, uh, John Byrne run, and we'll talk about all of them. So hopefully nice. I can make that happen. Nice. Uh, the only other thing is, as comic book fans, why aren't we talking about the great what if we got last season and Loki? Well, we did talk about Loki when you were gone. Okay. Yeah, but I need to watch season two. Of what if? Um, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I look at it like this: people are kind of hard on it, and then really looking at each specific episode. I say, if you got rid of all the live action shows and just gave me a what if cartoon, I'd be happy because it has all the fun aspects of the big Marvel universe with crossovers, characters that we've never seen. I mean, this last season we got to see Giant Man, Bill Foster, Giant Man. And yeah. so, like, it's just the cool shit like that that I love in What If. My my favorite part of this season was that it was actually remixing. There's enough MCU stuff out now 
that they can actually go and grab and remix and stuff and make it kind of cool. So, well, and that's and and so I think to me the like the critical comment there, Clay, is why is no one talking about it? Is because there's just too much fucking shit out there. Like until you brought up season two of What If, I totally forgot it it had come out. Yeah. Like I remember it.